SOE1 is a 30-minute oral examination covering three questions on pharmacology and three questions on physiology. You are given 15 minutes on each section. SOE2 is a 30-minute oral examination covering three questions on clinical anaesthesia and three questions on physics, measurement, equipment and safety, again with 15 minutes on each section. During the briefing for SOE2, the invigilator will hand around a clinical scenario. This is a laminated sheet containing a short description of a clinical case. There may also be some additional clinical material, such as blood results on the sheet. You don't have to memorize the details, as an identical sheet will be on the exam table for you to refer to when being examined. You will have plenty of time to read the information before you enter the exam room. Once you have been handed the information sheet, you are under exam conditions and you should not discuss the scenario with the other candidates. The invigilator will collect the laminated sheets before you leave the briefing room. OK, I'll just give you your cubicle letters. Towards the end of the briefing, the invigilator will read out the candidate number followed by the cubicle letter for each candidate. On completion of the briefing, the invigilator will go and check if the examiners are ready on the exam floor. This will give you an opportunity to take a drink before you start your exam. On his or her return, the invigilator will check that all candidates are ready, ensure that everyone knows which cubicle they are assigned to, and then take you to the exam floor. The cubicles are arranged around the edge of the room and are identified by large letters adjacent to the entrance. A will be the nearest cubicle on the left-hand side as you walk in and they follow round the perimeter in alphabetical order. Cubicles G and H, for instance, will be at the far end of the room and the last cubicle in the sequence will be on the near right. There are normally 12 cubicles, so the last one on the right is usually L. Once on the exam floor, the invigilator will ask you to go directly to your assigned cubicle. As soon as you enter your exam cubicle, take a quick look around. There will be two examiners sat at the exam table. They will have nameplates on the table to identify them. As mentioned in the briefing, there may be a third person an observer sat in the corner of the cubicle, but when you take your seat at the exam table, they will normally be sat out of sight. They play no part in the exam, so try to ignore them. If you don't know the examiners or the observer, and they don't know you, then the examiners will introduce themselves and check your candidate number. If you know or recognize your examiners and they recognize you, then the examiners will make the decision to move you to another cubicle. Once the introductions are done, you will be asked to take a seat. Remember, the exam doesn't start until the bell rings. So if there is a delay, it may be that other cubicles are swapping candidates. Where a candidate knows either one or both of their examiners, then the candidate will normally be moved to another cubicle. So even if you don't know your examiners, you may be asked to move to another cubicle to achieve the swap. Don't worry about mark sheets and candidate numbers being mixed up. There are a number of safety checks in place to ensure there is no confusion. The floor supervisor will ensure that everything is transferred correctly. The floor supervisor will make a final check in each cubicle to ensure everyone is settled before they give the signal for the invigilator to ring the bell. The exam bell will sound at the beginning of the exam, halfway through to prompt the examiners to change question topic and then at the completion of the exam. The examiners will react to these, starting and completing your exam as the bell rings, so take your prompts from them. When the first bell rings, your examiners will start the exam. One examiner will be asking questions and the other will be writing notes to use as an aid memoir of your performance. Try to ignore this process and concentrate on the examiner asking you questions. 
Don't worry about when you should move from one question to another. The examiners will move you from one topic to another. When the final bell rings, the examiners will stop their questioning, tell you that the exam is complete and that you can now leave the exam floor. The examiners are trained to remain neutral at all times, so don't try to read anything into their behaviour or attitude at the end of the exam. No marks are awarded until all candidates have left the room. The examiners may then discuss certain aspects of your performance. They will, however, reach their decision and award marks independently. At the end of each exam day, the examiners attend a call-over meeting where they discuss candidate and question performance and confirm the results for that day. Examination results are then placed on the examinations pages of the college website from 2pm on the first working day following your exam. If time allows on a Friday, the examinations manager will ensure that Friday's results are put in place by 8pm. So if your exam was on a Friday, check the website on Friday evening when you get home. The results posted on the website are in the form of a pass or fail list. No other information is given at this stage. Candidates are identified by the use of their candidate number and college reference number. This is the six-figure number that is assigned to you when you join the college. Therefore, make sure you have these numbers to hand when you check for your result. Remember, both numbers are quoted on your admission notice. Confirmation of the result will be sent to you by post. Your result letter will advise you of your scores in each section of the SOE and each station of the OSCE along with your total scores for each component. Once you have received your result letter, examiners' comments regarding SOEs can be requested in writing or by email to the examinations department. Examples of OSCE and SOE questions can be found on the examinations pages of the college website and in the guide to the primary examination. If you require any further assistance in applying or preparing for your examination, then please do not hesitate to contact the examinations department. We hope you have found the SOE and OSCE videos useful in gaining an insight into what to expect when sitting the primary FRCA OSCE SOE examinations.